run for your life. The nightmare has begun. It will find you in the hour when dream and reality merge. The last desperate moment of darkness. All right, who is it? Just before dawn. Just, just before, before dawn. dawn. dawn, 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 dawn. Unleashed on theaters just a few short weeks before Halloween 2 in October of 1981, this little independent slasher, directed by Jeff Lieberman, went largely unnoticed, but picked up steam when it appeared on video rental shelves the following year. Over the years, Just Before Dawn found itself being name-checked often by cult horror fans, and in 2005, the beloved company Media Blasters released a special two-disc edition featuring commentary and a making of featurette. Grab a comfy blanket, lower the lights, and snuggle up for an in-depth look at Just, just Before Dawn. Just Before Dawn comes horror. Just Before Dawn comes death. Rated R. You're watching Klimchak's Killer Collection, a program that culturally reevaluates classic and contemporary horror films like Just Before Dawn. I first encountered Just Before Dawn on the shelf of the very first video rental store that I ever rented videos from here in my hometown of Ashland, this was back in the day when you had to pay a yearly fee to be a member of a video rental club, in addition to your rental fees. He, as a 12-year-old rental customer, was George Kennedy's name on the box. I knew this wasn't just going to be another low-rent slasher. Or was it? Let's take a close look at Just Before Dawn. Just Before Dawn is one of those rare early 80s slasher entries that got everything right about slasher heyday movies while retaining a bit of 70s grit. And this is probably due to a screenplay that mutated from something more supernaturally and spiritually tinged. Just Before Dawn takes all of its execution notes from its contemporaries. It opens with a setup kill that either establishes motive or serves to set up a mystery. The opening kill is unsettling and mean-spirited, and sets a tone that delivers what many slashers failed to deliver, a plausible scenario in a realistic and threatening environment, with the scariest animal of all being the threat, other human beings. I guess you're looking to find your way out of here. No, sir, we're doing just fine. We're going up the mountain to do some camping. <laughs> Only a fool would do that. Well, we got five of them in here. Well, I can't let you go sir, up. Sir, <laughs> hold on, hold on a second. I See, the boy here's a land bear, and we're going up to look over the back 40. I told you to skadoot. Yeah, you told us. We want to know why. What's out there? You sure raise the devil around here. What makes Just Before Dawn an interesting horror film is that it manages to balance commentary about meddling kids messing around in places they shouldn't be simply because they feel entitled to, with a real sense of foreboding because... While these characters are ignorant, they aren't stupid. And that helps them retain enough empathetic qualities for the viewer to kind of care when these kids are in peril, all while illustrating how karma works. We can't just leave him here. He'll starve. He might die, but he won't starve. Stop, will you? Hey! You gotta stop! Reminds me of the time I downed five Arca Martinis. Talk about demons. Sure looks like he's being chased by demons. Ultimately, Just Before Dawn works because the multi-dimensional characters that survive this thing complete full arcs before the film concludes. The writing and direction somehow manages to put the viewer in the positions of all of the characters because we've all been in places where we've had to make very difficult choices. And ultimately, that's really what Just Before Dawn is about making difficult choices between what we want to do, what our pride allows us to do, and what we should do. Just Before Dawn is an excellent little sleeper that delivers on all of the levels that fans of classic slashers want, 
If you're looking to do the Slashers one-on-one -on -one historical course, this is essential viewing, and I give it four out of five slashes on the slasher scale. Just Before Dawn makes a great double bill with either 1972's Deliverance or 1984's The Final Terror. Or, if you find you have the time, make it a triple feature. Jesus! They're not dead! Take it easy, son. Take it easy. Megan and Daniel, they're not dead! It's lost. <laughs> So we're getting ready to shoot the uh, intros for the first five episodes. Uh, this is our first day of uh, actual And most of the Watching Me Amaze productions happen right here in this uh, studio space. Here we are, high atop Hoffman Boulevard in Ashland, Pennsylvania at the Ground Floor East Coast Studios. Room on the uh, attic floor that we used to build the set for. I don't know what it looks like through there, but it looks great through here. Yeah, it's it's really lit up. I have a visitor on the set now. Lucy is coming to visit me. She likes to know what's going on here in the, uh, in the set. As you can see, uh, since you usually can't see what's uh, going on in the shot, I'm in my sweatpants. Yes, Lucy, I'm in my sweatpants. This is why not much is getting done right now because, uh, Lucy is coming in watching the Amaze Productions at the Ground Floor East Coast Studios. I'm Jack Skiller Collection Season 2 with Episode 40. Zombie Holocaust. Intros and outros. All takes. Do do do.